What's up everybody, welcome to another video. I'm here at the cabin off grid as usual. And uh, I wanted to share a video today about advice for creative people thinking about doing this, going off grid. Uh, there's a few things I wanna say about it. First, I just wanna say I've lived this way for quite a few years. I'm a musician by trade, so I have quite a bit of, uh, quite, a, quite a few words to offer on the subject. So uh, stick around and feel free to subscribe, of course, if you haven't done so already. So there's a few levels of off-grid we wanna talk about. I, I wanna just start off by saying, creative people have great imaginations. And you know, when they think of going off-grid, they'll think of uh, you know, sitting by a quiet stream and, and painting or, or composing music or, or being like Thoreau and, and writing a beautiful novel. And that is part of all of this. You get solitude out here. I'm gonna to get to the good stuff at the end, but I wanna get to the reality at the beginning of this video. So um, what you need to know, first of all, is there's several levels of off-grid, like layers. Um, personally, I'll post the video up here of uh, my off-grid cabin that I built uh, a few years back. My friend Matt made a video on that. I didn't do any YouTube videos on that, of course. But anyways, um, that was absolutely from scratch. I lived in a tent on a raw piece of land and built a cabin from trees and ended up living in that and added to it over the course of five years. That's the most hardcore level you could do. I didn't realize at the time. Uh, at the time, I just thought that's what you do. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, I had a lot of outdoor experience at the time, but no carpentry experience. It turned into a pretty wild ride. But anyways, uh, I did it. And I built a place that's actually bigger than the one you see behind me here and lived there for about five years and uh, sold it. And now I'm kind of waiting out the market. This is my, my state right now. But anyways, um, that's the most hardcore level you could do. If you're gonna do it from that level, that's one thing. There's another level of buying a place that's ready-made. That's the next level. Uh, you're gonna have things to fix. There's chores to do, et cetera, et cetera. But at least you have a structure to get into. Then the third level would be just renting a place for a stretch at a time and working on your art there and then going back to wherever it is you actually live. So I'm gonna talk about the most hardcore level at first. So if, if you're gonna go from scratch, uh, please know that most of your energy for the first, for me it was like a good year, is gonna to go to building that place. If not all of your energy is gonna to go to building that place. Uh, when I was doing it, I was living in a tent and I had gigs all through my first summer and into the fall of, of uh, prepping for the actual build, which happened in the fall. So I was doing gigs and then getting soaked with tree sap and black flies the rest of the time. It was intense. And then when I got out of the tent and into the structure, I could play more guitar, but there's still a million things to do. Once you actually have a structure up, there is like plumbing and electrical and finishing and a million things to do. You haven't even gotten started yet. When the structure is actually up. So don't kid yourself, it takes a long time, especially if you're a creative person and you know you don't have all the money in the world to do something like this, you just really have the passion to do it, you'll probably run into the same thing I did. <laughs> so anyways, um, if you're going to go the most hardcore route, it's going to take you a long time before you get back to your actual art. Just a fair warning. Uh, it happened to me, you know, I didn't realize how much energy it would actually take to do something like this. I just went for it and I learned, and now I know. So when I'm talking about it, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you do the second level, uh, say you buy a place that's off grid or way out in the country, rural, whatever, uh, it's gonna have a lot of work to do. Old houses always do have lots of work to do on them, but you at least have a structure, you know, and you have a place to get started. You probably have the plumbing already in order, some power and all the rest of it. Uh, you can do upgrades and, and balance your time a lot more wisely if you're doing it that way. Um, so that level is a good balance of like you're going to get your hands dirty and you're going to have ample space and time to actually work on your craft. The third way is for the people who just want to dip their feet in. You know, they want to just get two weeks and dial in what it is they're working on creatively, whether it's a book, whether it's a painting, whether it's a film, whatever, and uh, dial it in for two weeks, get their solitude, and go back to the city refreshed, you know? All ways are respectable, of course. I just wanted to kind of paint a picture of how they all kind of look. And so if you're a creative person thinking about doing something less or dreaming about being in the forest, uh, the realities 
are kind of what I've laid out. Uh, if you want to go build your own place and be off the grid, good for you, but it's going to take a long time, a lot of work. And if you don't have the skills already, it's going to be a grind for years if you go all out from scratch. If you buy a little cottage, it's going to be hard, it's going to be a pain, it's going to be annoying for you while you're trying to work on your art and stay creative. Um, but you're going to be able to access that solitude a lot easier because you're not going to be stressed about building. You're going to have something to work in, a shelter, not a tent like I had. So you're one step ahead of the game and it's totally respectable. You know, if, if none of that appeals to you, what I've said, rent a cool off-grid place on Airbnb or whatever, go camping, go to the middle of the wilderness for as long as you need to go to, do your thing, get your inspiration, go back to where you live and go back refreshed, excited to do it again. You know, dip your toes in. There's no shame in not going all out. So I just wanted to lay that out for some of you creatives there. Uh, the benefit of being out in a place like this is the solitude you get. Sorry, the sun's in my eyes here. I'm trying to balance it. There you go. I'm going to try and do that. Um, you do get solitude out here. You get clarity. You get a distraction-free environment to work on your craft and the things that are inspiring to you. You will get that, you know. Um, but do you really need to go move to the wilderness, leave everything behind to do that, to get that? That's up to you to decide. I just wanted to give you kind of a realistic look at, at how it actually is. I, I'm a dreamer and I love the idea of doing this and I also love the price. You know, I didn't want a mortgage and I, I achieved that. When I built my cabin and bought the land, I didn't have a mortgage. So that was a huge plus. I didn't have to worry about finances at all. And that was massive for me, you know? That was great. I mean, who wouldn't like that, right? So, in that sense, it was great. But my time was taken over and my energy was taken over by the project. So, realize that if you're gonna get into building a place from scratch, or even fixing up a really old place, it's gonna take more than you think. So, just putting that out there for you creatives who are wonderful daydreamers, I encourage you to keep on daydreaming away about doing stuff like this and you should go and do it because it's great for the inspiration and it's great for the creative spark. But really uh, think about my words and give it some, watch my videos that I posted and watch my other videos to get more of a sense of what you're getting into here and then make your decision. And I wish you all the best. Cheers everybody.